forward. So first of all, what's happening in China? Um, it's a very mixed picture. It's a contradictory picture. So there's one perspective that holds that things are, are fairly good, better than you might think. Um, on the economic side, uh, China is reporting a rapid resumption of manufacturing, of industrial output, uh, and so on. They're using household consumption vouchers, coupons, to put money right in people's pockets. They've got tax holidays and uh, local bonds to simulate demand. Uh, they're loosening their crackdown uh, carefully, but quickly, faster than other countries. Uh, the Chinese official projections and semi-official projections anticipate uh, a major bounce in the third quarter, the fourth quarter, so the second half of, of this year, uh, predicting a, a V-shaped recovery, as they say. Politically, uh, Xi Jinping seems to be even stronger than ever before. Uh, you know, he'd already purged his rivals. He uh, ended term limits. And now the story that the Chinese Communist Party is telling is that he's licked COVID. Uh, he's flexing his muscles by cracking down on any uh, criticism. Uh, and the party is in a way, rewriting history. They're airbrushing out the bad parts, the early parts, and now kind of belatedly remembering things like, oh, that whistleblower in Wuhan, Dr. Uh, Li Wenlang, who was punished for speaking the truth. Well, actually, uh, that was an error by some local uh, officials. Uh, he was actually a hero of the Communist Party. He was a martyr. But above all, Xi Jinping is, is gleefully pointing to the catastrophic failures in the West, particularly in the United States, to get ahead of the virus, to uh, prevent it or to contain it, and claiming that that exonerates China's handling and, in fact, makes China look pretty good. Uh, but there's another perspective, uh, and that is that things are actually much worse than they appear. You know, China's official figures, uh, particularly about the, uh, the economy, have been massaged, you know, to the very edge of credibility, if not over the edge, to minimize the perceived impact of, of COVID and to make it look like a recovery is well underway. But we know that there are huge problems in the Chinese economy. There were problems, frankly, before COVID. Um, now, unemployment is many, many times higher. Some uh, credible estimates say it's maybe 10 times higher than the official numbers. And the Chinese official numbers don't even include uh, the migrant workers, and there are hundreds of millions of them within China, workers who came from the rural provinces to the cities to work in factories. There's a, a real torrent, a flood of bankruptcies, uh, especially in the private sector, which is much more uh, productive than the state-owned sectors. There's falling consumption, there's falling real estate values, there's falling foreign trade, uh, there's downward pressure on China's currency. So it's not a pretty picture. Normally, faced with economic headwinds of this magnitude, um, what the Chinese government would do, what it has done, is to resort to big, big stimulus packages. What the US is doing, Japan is doing, Germany, other European industrialized countries are doing. That's normal for uh, China. They did it in 2008 and 2009. Apparently, they can't do it now. They don't seem to be able to use that tool anymore because, among other things, they're still struggling under a mountain of debt from their last massive stimulus program. And they're also faced with a huge number of non performing loans that they haven't managed to clean up in their efforts to uh, rebalance their own economy. 
Uh, right now, the Chinese leadership is very concerned about the pace of foreign manufacturers uh, looking to leave China uh, as companies and countries realize how over-dependent they have become on China. Uh, they suffered in the shutdown. And now they are looking for ways that they can diversify their supply chains so that uh, they have more options and more latitude. So while the Chinese government is pushing the narrative that uh, China managed COVID uh, on balance pretty well and is now headed for sort of V-shaped recovery, the reality is a lot less encouraging. Because on top of all of the problems that I've mentioned, and those are, are serious problems, remember that for China, still more than 30% of its GDP is trade-based, economic recovery is going to depend on a quick global recovery. And that clearly is, is not happening. Then on the political side, during the crisis, Xi Jinping, as strong as he is, uh, was the target of unprecedented criticism from within China, from a lot of different places, including from very highly respected scholars uh, who are uh, influential in, in China. Um, but beyond the elites, he and the party itself were ridiculed for what uh, to Chinese citizens looked like hypocrisy and were lambasted for cover-ups and for missteps. And in an authoritarian system like China, you could say that this broke a taboo. It's sort of the emperor's new clothes syndrome. So the state can crack down on uh, criticism uh, as the censors have, but you can't make people unsee uh, the things that they saw in uh, the first month or so of the, of the COVID outbreak. Um, and now for not only reasons of public health, but also for political reasons, uh, the, the party is very worried about a resurgence of uh, COVID infections. Um, and, you know, frankly, that's probably inevitable to a certain degree. They already have a new serious outbreak on the Russian-China border. Um, they are uh, struggling to deal with uh, the tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of Chinese citizens who have been stuck overseas as students or workers and are now trying to come back and may well be importing uh, the virus along with them. Um, the, Party is also afraid of, you know, the accountability uh, for having allowed the virus to get out of control in the first place in the wet markets that they had promised to shut down after SARS and so on. So they're aggressively rewriting the origin story of, uh, of the virus as we've seen. And again, as politically powerful as Xi Jinping may be, he's already had some uh, vulnerabilities his handling of, uh, of trade with the U.S., with Donald Trump, his handling of Taiwan and the Taiwan elections, uh, where a, uh, a, a, the president of Taiwan was reelected. She's no friend of the mainland. Uh, the situation in Hong Kong and so on. And now there's grumbling about his handling of, of COVID. And then there's the economic turbulence uh, that's clearly going to continue into 2021. So he may be a strong man, but hey, authoritarian leaders have politics too, and a one-party system uh, can be pretty tricky. So while he, he looks stronger in some ways after the first wave of the virus, uh, there are plenty of reasons to think that uh, he may in fact be quite vulnerable. Now